Rockstar released a second trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2 last week, and since then many have been wondering just what we thought of it. After all, this is the first Rockstar game to be created from the ground up for modern consoles. Sure, GTA 5 received an incredibly impressive upgrade when brought over to the new machines, but it was still very much rooted in last generation technology. This time, however, Red Dead Redemption 2 showcases many key upgrades on offer in Rockstar's in-house Rage Engine. Now, before jumping into individual scenes, the first thing to address here is the nature of the trailer. Is it real time and representative of the game itself? Well, I think several things make it clear that what we are seeing here is pulled from the real-time engine. You'll recognize familiar rendering artifacts, for instance, that were present in GTA 5 and even the original Red Dead. On top of that, alpha to coverage artifacts are visible in the character's hair here. We also see rendering techniques in play that were used in previous Rage-based games, such as the method for rendering smooth power lines. Beyond that, while it does look great for an open world game, there's nothing really going on here that would preclude this from being real time. It's also worth noting that this trailer is displayed at a native 1080p, which is likely representative of the experience you'll have on a standard console like the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. It seems rather likely that a game this big will support both the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X come launch, however. We're also hoping for full HDR support because, well, this is a perfect game for it. Okay, so let's jump in right at the start of the new trailer. The first two shots showcase some lovely scenery, rich in foliage and detail, but with a lot of extra subtle animation and movement throughout the scene. Birds flying around in the sky, grass which smoothly parts as the horse walks through it, along with plenty of other subtle animation on the horse and rider. This type of shot was used heavily in the original trailer as well. The idea is clearly to showcase the sense of scale made possible with the improved engine. View distance is better than ever, and foliage density is greatly increased along with texture resolution. I think the size and scale of the world here are going to play a huge role just as it did in the original game. Of course, while the original does a nice job of conveying a relatively large sense of scale, it's clear that the view distance and terrain complexity is limited by the older console hardware and Red Dead Redemption 2 is a significant upgrade there. In many ways, I think that GTA 5 does a better job of showcasing the sense of scale we should expect in Red Dead 2, only without the fast-moving vehicles and planes, obviously. Beyond that, Red Dead 2 is also about presenting a living world, which we get a nice feel for this time around. There are a lot of animals present in many of these scenes. It's likely that these shots were selected to showcase the animal AI in action, especially since hunting will likely play a large role in the experience. The inclusion of a bow and arrow this time is interesting as well, of course. Clearly though, the most significant leap over any previous Rockstar title lies in the character rendering. The models used in this trailer are remarkably detailed with excellent skin shading, realistic facial animation, smoothly rendered hair, and eerily realistic eyes. The facial capture in particular really stands out here. Rockstar is impressed before with games like L.A. Noir, which mapped real actors onto polygonal models to great effect, but the actual model detail was somewhat lacking. It's not clear yet how these facial animations are being implemented in Red Dead 2, but the results are certainly promising. Check this out, right as he finishes speaking for instance, you can see his eyes twitch in a remarkably realistic manner. It's the type of detail that really helps sell character interactions. I also appreciate the way Morgan closes an eye while firing off these revolvers in this scene. Very cool. The details continue right down to the mouths of the characters with detailed teeth and tongue models within. Then there are the clothes. Materials have clearly received a boost this time with fabric losing the plasticky look of the original game. The increased polygon count helps smooth out some chunky edges, and the resolution of the textures helps better define the character models. Some things still could be a little bit improved though. The shader used on this vest here, for instance, looks a little awkward. Still, there's no denying it. If you go back to the original game, you can see that we're looking at a huge leap here in terms of character model quality. The leap is larger than you might have expected. Animals are, of course, more detailed this time as well. Beyond the models themselves, look at the drool pouring out of this horse's mouth as he runs faster. What a cool detail. Also, this horse. Then there's all the incidental objects placed around the various scenes in this trailer. 
The sheer volume of tiny detail present really sticks out. Lots of individually modeled objects are scattered about here. Then the next shot gives us a close-up of an impressively rounded doorknob. In this scene then, the lamps along the wall are also finely detailed, and notice that the explosions cast shadows from their respective light sources. Which of course brings us to lighting and effects in general. Perhaps the most striking addition here is the particle lighting. Smoke glows and takes on the right color from local lights such as fire and sparks, creating a thick atmosphere in select situations. Several other shots also indicate that shadow resolution is very reasonable here, with minimal artifacts. The ambient occlusion implementation is very well done as well. Now this next shot is interesting, it's tough to say for sure, but the way the sunlight plays off the floor here gives the impression of light bounce around the room. Maybe we're looking at a new global illumination implementation for this game. We'll have to wait and see the final game to be sure, but it's interesting to consider. One constant throughout these trailers though is of course the gorgeous rendering of the sky. I mean just look at this. And if we quickly scrub back and forth you can see that there's some sort of dynamic cloud system in effect similar to Horizon Zero Dawn. Ultimately though we're talking about 3 minutes total worth of footage at best right now, but the results on display are extremely interesting. We've played a lot of open world games this generation and it feels like Red Dead 2 is on par with the very best of them. In fact, it's fun to look at other games in comparison. Assassin's Creed Origins, for instance, is not yet available, but is generally looking quite nice. Here's the game running on the Xbox One X, downscaled from its higher resolution mode. In many ways, its world shares more with the original Red Dead in the fact that it's much less of a green place in comparison to Red Dead 2, but the sense of scale is similar. Standing up on this pyramid and looking out over the world gives quite a nice sense of scale something we also feel at various points in the Red Dead trailer. And if we're using trailers as a comparison point, how about something like The Witcher 3? Which is kind of fun to compare to since they both feature large-scale natural environments. Now Witcher 3 is of course still a gorgeous game even today, but how do you think they compare? Okay, so returning back to the original question posed by our Twitter followers and the like, yes, we are impressed with what Rockstar has shown thus far. Red Dead 2 has a unique style all its own and is shaping up to be a gorgeous open world game. There are still areas where we could see room for improvement of course, but overall, Rage is looking great on current generation systems. But that's all for now though. If you enjoyed this little trailer analysis piece, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing, and following us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.